everyone, it's SJ and Naomi. I've just arrived down at my sister's. Um, we've had a really shocking few weeks and um, this isn't going to be a video that we normally would post. We normally just try and post when we've had some positive news but so many people have asked how we're doing and we're at a really critical stage of having to launch our Back Pocket fundraiser. Um, it's a raffle. I just wanted to tie that at the beginning in case you only watched a second of this video. <laughs> um, please stay tuned for the raffle and it will be linked below. So when we did our last video, um, which was really great and we were doing, um, we'd had the great news that I was having um, the surgery. So that was really exciting. And then uh, unfortunately at the beginning of December, I just got ill, I just got COVID and uh, I was perfectly normal, just like absolutely mm. living my best life. Well, live really, one thing I want to say about cancer is that I did live with it and I was living with it. And so I think that I really want to say to people, if you get, you know, these videos can be a disaster because you're thinking you can't live with cancer. And, and actually I really was when I was on Beacon. So then I got um, COVID and then long story short, I just sort of, didn't get better and so in the end uh I went to the doctor probably after about 10 days and they're like every time I was speaking to someone on the phone they're like oh really not very well and I was like oh I've just got okay. a bit wispy a bit of covid and just never got better so um by maybe mid-December I um couldn't really talk or breathe really easily so they scanned me and obviously I thought it was an infection and I uh, was thinking I'll get some antibiotics mm. and then <coughs> fortunately they called me in within like an hour and mm. said uh, it's cancer spread across your chest so we were really shocked uh, I was like what like this time last year was exactly the same and I was back in hospital Back I had just been given the that the cancer was cold. Yeah, I'd just been told. Just I'd been through every scanner We'd been possible. signed off for Christmas by the oncologist, even, and then... Oh, I'd had this awful phone call. It, it was really embarrassing because I had a phone call with the oncologist and I went, oh, I know how difficult your job is this time of year because, of course, I got diagnosed last yeah. Christmas year, last Christmas Eve, and I really feel for you and I hope you have a nice Christmas. The next minute, I'm back in the room. And he said to me, oh, I've got it again. And we were just like, and they're shocked. They're like, mm. we don't know where it was hiding. Um, but it was obviously there. And actually, COVID is a bit of a red herring. So what could have happened? So if I'm trying to find a positive, which is really, really hard to do, I could say I'm really glad I didn't have open surgery, which I was approved for. I even had the pre-medical and uh, the anaesthetist signed me off. If I had had that surgery, what would have happened is I probably would have come round. Um, I would have had liver mets taken out, so I'd have left less cancer in my liver. But what would happen is I'd have been led there in recovery and probably my lungs would have gone there, would have gone, oh my God, lungs would have collapsed and I probably wouldn't have come out. So I can, or I would be, I wouldn't have come out of hospital and then I wouldn't have had chemotherapy. So then what happened was last Monday, I arrived for my five days of, I was determined, I was in that hospital all weekend because of my breathing, so Dane was here and couldn't get my breath. So I ended up in the hospital and I got my breath and all fine and got home. And they can't, because my cancer is covering my chest, they can't tell if it's like, if I've got clots or infection, it's literally just like, a white blur so yeah what they say is there's so much going on in my chest that's the dog that's, that's not lying. Amy making that noise <laughs> <laughs> so hard I can't make you laugh oh my god anyway so I arrived for radiotherapy I was determined I was like see you Monday I'm being here yeah. wheelchair in because I can't walk anymore so I'm wheelchair in and they said, uh, so you're having one large session today? And I was like, no, I'm having five, five. days. Well, no, Dr. Reed's going to see you after this. You're just having one large session. 
So I would say, I would say to you that lying on that scanner, having major therapy, not knowing what's going on, but knowing that you're only having one session, you know that this isn't going well. And then this doctor, he really irritated me. He's his palliative doctor and he was stroking my hand and saying how sorry he was. And he, I, he was talking to me about getting a big fluffy dressing gown and, and I said to him, well, do I need to up my antibiotics? Is this an infection? He said, well, we'll go and see Dr. Reed after. And then I just realised he was talking to me about my end of life rather than any treatment. So my mum was in the waiting room. And so they called my mum and we were walking down the corridor and I just looked and I said, I, I don't think they're going to give me um, chemotherapy even. And she was like, no, don't you? And I was like, no, so something's going on. So then we were taken into the room, these awful rooms, and they just said, um, we're really, really worried about you. And, uh, and he said, do you want me to be frank? And I was like, yeah, and he just said, you can, I said, am I having chemotherapy? He said, yeah, but you've got to go in tomorrow. He said, I've thought about it all night, all weekend, because I'd passed him when I was in this wheelchair going into the hospital. And he said, you've got to be in there tomorrow on this chemotherapy. I was like, well, I'm so relieved I'm having it. You know, like, it's so odd. If you've got cancer, you're desperate for chemotherapy, for hope, basically. And then we were just in this room and it was just a disaster because you've got your mum next to you, the oncologist on a little, on the t table and this palliative doctor in front of you. And they're all looking at you and, and no one is asking. And I was just looking at the wall and don't ask. Just do not ask. Like, just don't do it. No, don't do it. Then I asked. I was like, how long have I got? And they were just like, we've got weeks. And I was like, my God. Like you weren't supposed to say that. I was like, I can't believe you've just said that. So I just looked at my mum. Anyway, the thing about it is, is they don't know. They don't know. Because I've been, I've had this with my bowel, that I was really ill with my bowel. And, and the only way I've ever got through anything is by having hope. And if you take that out of it, which to be honest with you, when I was really ill in December and missed Christmas again, and you know, could only make it down for like an hour on Christmas day or whatever, I was ever so low and depressed and couldn't, and I couldn't talk. So I haven't been able to look after the children. And when you've lost your independence like that, you do lose hope anyway. So that had dwindled and weirdly I had a sense of calm because I was like, okay, I've got to control this now and I have got to show up for chemo tomorrow. And that was probably one of the hardest days of my life because I was completely off my head on all these drugs, obviously hadn't slept. And they're like, you've got to close your eyes. And I was like, I can't close my eyes because I just think of my children. <laughs> So it hurts too much. Anyway, now I feel much calmer because all the decisions have been made and I'm under the hospice care. And it's just been a real, like just a 360. So, but under the hospice care for care. For care. For care and treatment. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I've made all my, everything, we would never done anything because we've lived with this hope and it's not it's not stupid to live with that hope it's really important because that's what's got me through and now there are things so I am on active treatment so it's not that I'm not on chemo what they're saying is that the cancer is so aggressive in my lungs and then I've never responded to chemo before um that one will win. So for example, if the chemo doesn't work, my lungs of themselves will only last a little bit. But if the chemo or the radiotherapy, so my breathing, this is brilliant. This is like amazing, isn't it? Like I used to be like, if the people, obviously everyone was having to make phone calls and everything for me because I couldn't talk. 
and people go, you're going to have to put on the phone, like, to authorize something, and I'd be like, <laughs> they'd be like, to you the can't, ankles. they were like, she should be in A&E, she shouldn't be at home, and I was like, no, she wouldn't go, I wouldn't go, because I was like, I'm not putting myself anywhere near that COVID because I won't survive it. Um, and I could only go into, it was all really complicated. I wouldn't, I would go to hospital, I would go to an oncology unit, but I wouldn't go to a medical unit. Um, because you're surrounded by everyone that's, you know, all different illnesses and I'm too vulnerable. I would, you know, I don't need a chest infection and I'm better off just, I can be still at home and have care at home. So basically I've been in bed since the 5th <laughs> of December and just having lovely visits and I potter sometimes to the hospital but now that stops her coming to the house. But we've had the, we have got this opportunity. So we always wanted to do immunotherapy. But what happened was obviously I was responding to Beacon and having operation. Yeah. So it had always been on the back burner, but we had always okay. researched it. Had the numbers. We knew it's the way forward. The we knew that we would we one day. To, they just always told us, and I think it is the right strategy to keep when it's working, then have the next thing. So you're constantly re-attacking the cancer, not putting everything at once. I don't know if that was the right strategy, but we had a strategy. But now um, we really need that immunotherapy. It's a private clinic. Mm -hmm. We've had we've had great stories from them, people that we know who've used them. And we're doing a fundraiser and it's a raffle because Nay was like, I don't want to just ask for money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but she was happy if we if I did a raffle, so give me a give me a challenge. <laughs> and I have a raffle. Um I'm gonna link it below. Please enter it. Do £25 for a ticket. So explain what it is. So it's your own but you've got two minutes. Oh. So it's they take blood from your own body. They um make a antibody for your immune system, put it back in your body. So what it should do is enable A me to feel better. Straight away. Straight away, my well being. It's not that I'm going to necessarily increase, you know, my life by a long time. But I would love to have some independence. I'd love to have some brighter days. And then what it will do is improve my immune so even if there's a chance of me responding better to chemo, yeah. there's that. We've done loads of other things already, um, and we've. I would say to you, we've exhausted every option that we can now. Um, we, we have done it all, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And we know where we are. I'm like, going to do this. Yeah, it's just a bit it's of hope. Not, it's not. It's not just a bit of hope. It's it's a bit of science, and we need yeah. that science. And um, if we can, we can't get it without the money and it's such a huge amount of money mm -hmm. it's forty four thousand pounds and we mm -hmm. just we wanted to you'd have an experience mm -hmm. on us uh, oh. for us um you know mm -hmm. for some extra time with the girls yeah um i just want to say that every message and every everything that i've ever had from all of this has got me through yeah. i know that sounds really silly because it's it such an odd thing to share this journey and even this bit i don't i've always been so conscious because i don't want the children to ever look back and think oh my god what was mummy doing but <laughs> truthfully it's meant a lot so thank you thank you and we'll share this this yeah. with everyone it's for knowledge for everyone as well we're not keeping it back we just want to do it and then share our experience of it very genuinely so the raffle's linked below our time's running out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speak to you love. below. We're here together. Always. Yeah. Always, always, always. I'm here. So just message us anytime. We're always sat together. <laughs> We're always sat together on our phones. Yeah. <laughs> mm. oh, I love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you.